It's only just very recently that this area was taken back by the Ukrainians and already got this mammoth effort going on to clear away this rubble from these apartments that have been destroyed and underneath they believe are still a bunch of bodies that they're trying to find. It's been a long 10 weeks since Russia invaded Ukraine. Over 11 million Ukrainians have fled their homes. Thousands of civilians have died. It seems like there was a whole family that was sheltering in the basement when this bomb hit. Under here you can see just a mangled body that barely resembles a human at all. In the north of the country, where Russian soldiers have just recently retreated from, bodies are being exhumed with signs of torture, rape and execution. The Ukrainian government claims that these amount to thousands of war crimes. In early March, Russian soldiers arrived in the sleepy village of Yahidne, just north of Kyiv, and set up base here. Until just two months ago, this was 12-year-old Yulia's school. And this is a body here? Yeah. After arriving here, Russian soldiers went door to door, taking hundreds of villagers from their homes and bringing them to this school. They forced them inside this basement where they stayed for 25 days. The villagers believe they were used as human shields to protect the Russian military unit from Ukrainian bombs. What does this say on the door? Are you comfortable going down there? Are you sure? Yeah. Люди просто лежали на проходах, потому що було негде спати. Я спала отут. You're very brave. I would have been absolutely terrified. Було страшно дуже, тому що вони ж не ми ж не розуміли, чого вони сюди привели нас і що з нами зроблять. Було так якось не по собі, що людей ми виносять, ну так було не не дуже це бачити. Did you do these drawings up here? Да, я малювала і це Росія проти України, і в ітогі побіжила Україна. No one knows exactly how many passed away while the Russians were here. The imprisoned villagers tried to keep count. Scratched into the wall to the right of this door are the names of the elderly who died. On the left are some of those who were killed. That list includes Anatoly Yanuk, or Tolik as he's known, a neighbor of Yulia's. Тут форточка або двері тільки чуть закриються різко, і вже стрес. Ми ще від цього не відійшли, ще ми довго будемо тут. Толик is Katerina's nephew. Ми прийшли додому, і так в домі вже було просто все вибите. Посуда побита, машинку вони розбили. Вони просто відкривають шухляд, який можна які не добили, і гадять просто туди. Це не люди, це не люди. Я не знаю, звідки він їх копав, той Путін їх. Ну це дикуни. Oh wow, there's a lot of weaponry here. Там артилерія тяжела, я. О, там танки, там бронетранспортёры. О, тут їхня оборона. От вони так оборудували, защищалися так. What about your family? What happened with your nephew? Племянником він вечором ішов додому в той же день, коли вони вийшли в село. О, так сказали, що лажись. А Толик сказав: "Я на своїй землі, чого я буду лажитися?" And what about your son? He was here at the same time, right? І тоді вони його ночі питали, тому що в нього в шкафу був форма з національної гвардії з академії. Ну я стала кричати, просити, потім це саме страшне, що було. Ой, просім побуду плакати.
Katerina's son, Sergei, is still in hospital, recovering from torture. Her nephew, Anatoly, has been buried. We obtained his death certificate, which states that he was shot in the head. When the Russians finally left Katerina's home, they forgot to take with them possible evidence of who they are, like pay slips for the soldiers. So these are documents that you found when you came back home? We spoke to over a dozen locals. All of them said the Russian soldiers occupying this area were of Asian appearance. Some said the fighters told them they came from the Russian Republic of Tuva. Buddhist books were also left behind. Based on the documents Katerina and others found, social media searches brought up multiple matches for these names and soldiers linked to them, though we were unable to verify their identities. We sent Russia's Ministry of Defense these names and asked if their soldiers had taken an entire village hostage, killing the elderly and executing the disobedient. We're still waiting for their response. Когда устраивали провокации в Сирии, потом выяснилось, что это фейк, такой же фейк и в Буче. The Russian government has publicly denied that war crimes have been committed, calling it fake news. We wanted to speak to someone in Russia currently waiting to be deployed, to understand their willingness to fight for a government accused of these atrocities. We contacted an individual currently serving with Russia's National Guard, who spoke to us because we agreed to hide his identity. So you're waiting for a command to go to the front lines. I mean, how are you feeling about that? You know, just today we met children who had been taken hostage. We met people who had been taken hostage. We met family members whose, you know, loved ones had been shot in the head at point blank range. You say that you want to defend your country, you want to fight for your country. Is it worth all the bloodshed? Is it worth all the Ukrainian lives that are going to be lost from this? Over the last month, Russia has withdrawn its forces from around Kyiv and instead sent thousands of troops to Ukraine's east, the Donbass region. A full-scale assault has been launched on this area, which has deep historical and cultural ties to Russia. We're with a group of volunteers who are heading into a little town called Severodonetsk to try and evacuate some people. You can see on this map here that this whole area is now surrounded on three sides by Russians. This could be one of the last chances for those guys to get out. What was that? It's a really insane situation here. This shelling is literally on top of this city. Shit. It's just a mad scramble to get people out of here as quickly as possible. We need to go. Come in, come in. When the volunteers come knocking, residents have to decide in a matter of minutes if they'll leave their homes along with everyone and everything they know. Evacuate, evacuate. We're going to 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 evacuate
у знакомых спрошу, если мы захотим. Давай нам письменно в конторе. А куда ехать? Кому мы там нужны? Украине вы нужны, вы мне нужны. Я для этого сюда приехал. Давайте. Нет. Нет. Давайте. Я вас хочу. Вернетесь, будет, будет уже тише, там будет мир, вернетесь. It's really crazy given just the level of fear that these people are having to live with and still there's just so much reluctance to leave your home, to leave everything you know. Come on. I can't imagine how traumatic these last couple of months have been. This is your granddaughter? Were you scared that something might happen to your family? For those who stay, life has moved almost entirely underground. It's not just fear that people live with. There's also deep divisions among them. Many families here in the East come from both sides of the border. Why is it that you're not leaving? I mean, the bombs are continuing to fall. Это молодежь, если есть финансовых, там можно вы. А куда нам уже пенсионеров старых? Здоровья нет. What happens if Russia does take this region? Да будем жить дай. Do you mind if Russia does take this area? Ну почему нет? Это его земли. Он их отдал просто Украине. Еще Ленин. Помолчи. Луганская. Я считаю, что он старший брат. Как он может быть братом Путин? Как? Даже без войны он брат там не был Путин. Мы другая держава, мы Украина, а то Россия. Он убивать нас пришел, а не освобождать. Как это Путин брат и бьет по нас? Видите разные мнения какие? These pockets of pro-Russian sentiments are making the Ukrainian authorities nervous that their own people could betray them. At a nearby police station, officers have captured locals who they believe are working for the other side. So this guy is a Russian prisoner of war, they're telling us, and they say that they've been able to catch quite a number of people that are either working directly with the Russians or spying for the Russian government here. Интересует а, то, как вы передавали информацию. Я не передавала информацию. Вернее, как мне Хорошо. Интересует ваша связь а, с работниками МГБ ДНР. So this police officer has just started his interrogation process. He has a suspected saboteur, and they suspect that she's providing information to the Russians. The police showed us the suspected spy's phone. No way. That's her password, a Z? Yeah, Z, Z is the sign Z. for Russia? Yeah. And here's Это переписка с ее куратором. Там, где он, он ей вставит какие-то задачи, которые она должна выполнить и предоставить там ту или иную информацию. Later on, the detainee agreed to speak with us. What do you think will happen to you now? Потом не знаю что. Смотри, какая ситуация сложится. Там что там говорили? Кто-то говорил расстреляют, кто-то говорил 20 лет. Этот конфликт. Смотри, в какую сторону. Поэтому мне теперь придется молиться, чтобы победила Россия. I mean, can you understand that, given what Russia is doing to millions of Ukrainians living in these conditions, suffering under these conditions in this war, that there'll be a lot of anger to you for expressing that? Все против войны. Я не хочу, чтобы гибли люди. Но от нас, от меня не зависит этого абсолютно. Если бы Украина не вступала в НАТО, то Россия не наступать не. For most Ukrainians, the fact there are people helping the opposition is a hard pill to swallow. Russia's offensive is relentless and unforgiving, the human cost immeasurable. Just a few weeks ago, Alexander Olhovik encouraged his 11-year-old daughter Alyssa and pregnant wife Marina to evacuate their home. <laughs> 
They packed up their lives and boarded the train in Kramatorsk. Just at that moment, several guided missiles hit the station. Both Alyssa and her mother died, along with 57 other civilians. Alexander has only just retrieved their bodies. We've seen so many deaths at this point, so many funerals, but the horrors of this war just keep getting worse. Alexander was trying to send his family away to safety and he's facing just this heart-wrenching task of having to bury them. Что мы так неправильно сделали? Я думал, ну, моя дочь вырастет. Я еще внука увижу. А получилось как-то наоборот. What was she like? Она как папа. Как маленькая пацанка, которая, блин, всегда в центре внимания. Вот где она, там вечно знаю шум. Такая бух. Водородная бомба такая, энергии было много. Но только эту энергию, блин, кто-то ну, нарушил и не знаю, куда дальше. Ну. Прости, дочка. Поймешь, папа. Прости, дочь. Лиска. Не знаю. Очень... Папа, не люблю. 